You know, working in all these larger videos can be pretty stressful. Now, don't get me wrong, I love my work, but that guy's only got so much energy to give. In times like this, I have to turn to one of my ultimate forms of realization. The PlayStation. I don't know if I have a favorite console, so many host experiences that are very near and dear to my heart, but if I wasn't going to say it was the Dreamcast, I might have to give that honor to the PS1. My first console was a PlayStation 2, sure, but new games were expensive, and backwards compatibility meant that I was given a lot of PS1 games as a kid, and honestly, I couldn't be more grateful. There's something about the welcoming tone of the early 3D era, and mixing that with the way this machine played music and sounds, I can't get enough of it. It's just the perfect mix of things that keep me adding to my PlayStation 1 collection constantly. But some games are a little more out of reach than others, and I was recently introduced to the game that finally got me to import something from another country, a little title from Japan known as Kazan no Notam, or Notam of the Wind. This was developed by ArtDink, a studio that's still going to this day and has garnered a reputation for their rather unorthodox interactive experiences. I think the game from this era people are most familiar with is A-Train, a railroad company simulator where you influence the growth and prosperity of a city by controlling its transportation. They also released Aquanauts Holiday, where you can explore the underwater depths of the ocean, a concept that has been emulated a few times, even by Artink themselves, who turned this into a bit of a franchise. But the game we're talking about today? Well, it's not one of their more well-known works. As you might be able to tell, I've become quite a fan of this obscure little title. But Notam is not a game about the economic growth of a city through its transportation, or a deep dive into the mysterious depths beneath the waves. This is a hot air balloon simulator. Now hold on, I promise this is cool, and if you don't believe me, I'll just show you. This is Kazea no Notam, Notam of the Wind. The first thing you might be wondering is, well, what you would do in a game like this. The whole idea behind a hot air balloon is just to sort of float around in the air in your big... balloon. Yeah, see, that's just it. This device is so straightforward, I can't even think of any funnier alternative things to call it. Notam finds an interesting way to handle this, though. While you don't have a direct control over the balloon's movements, you do have some level of influence. On the right side of the screen, you'll see a meter with several arrows on it, along with a balloon icon. Those arrows are showing you which direction the wind is blowing in whichever altitude, and you can use the triangle button to activate your burner and ascend, or the X button to use your valve and descend. By matching your balloon up with the same height as a particular wind current, your vessel will start drifting off in that direction. As time passes, the wind current will periodically change, so if you want to move one way but the wind currents just aren't leaving that option open to you, with a little patience, you'll probably get a favorable wind direction before long, and with luck, it'll be a strong one too, as the speed of each wind current seems to be randomly changed around as well. Now that's all well and good for maneuvering, but the game does also try to supply you with a bit of direction. You'll have three main modes, Fly In, Tri Delta, and Wolf Hunt. Fly In mode places a target on the map, you can choose where you want to start from, but it does have to be outside of a certain bubble surrounding your target. Once you take off, you'll need to work your way to the target and try to shoot all three of your available markers as close to the target's center as you can. In Tri Delta, you're trying to fly around to different positions of the map and laying down your three markers to make a triangle representing the distance that you've traveled, and from there, you can log your record for covered ground. Wolf Hunt will have several animal-themed balloons let loose around the map, and you'll need to track one down and shoot it with a marker, though you do have an unlimited amount in this mode. Each of these challenges are fairly fairly freeform. You have a set objective, but there's enough open nature here to allow you to adjust accordingly to whatever the forces of nature are doing. That's not to say there can't be moments of frustration. The direction and speed of the wind can be very random, and sometimes you might just not be completing your goal simply because the wind said no, and it's not really going to be your fault either. You just have to accept it, and there are a couple of factors that can end your mission outright. The first is running out of markers, and try Delta and Fly In, you only have three, and once those are gone, that's it. The second is a bit of a time constraint. You only have a certain amount of fuel at your disposal, as displayed by the meter on the bottom of the screen, and as you can imagine, using your burner to get higher will use it up faster. If you find yourself bumping into an object, you won't take damage, but you will lose fuel very quickly, and it will be pretty much a done match if you manage to get yourself stuck. The final factor is sailing off too far in the wrong direction and leaving the map, which will automatically end the round. So there is a bit of a challenge here, but I did find in time that keeping a calm attitude and willingness 
willingness to adapt helped me overcome what seemed like a tense situation at first. You will lose a couple of rounds just due to bad luck of the draw, but in a way, I kind of find that as part of the game's charm. That random element, the possibility of failure, and the occasional reliance on chance makes accomplishing what would typically be an incredibly simplistic task something surprisingly engaging. And as you start to get more accustomed to how to take advantage of what's given to you, that's when you start to try out rounds mode. This is almost the main campaign of the game. There's no real narrative here, but it is where you put your skills to the test. You have nine rounds that take all the three main tasks and add new stipulations to them that really test your ability to work with the wind and overcome your obstacles. Like in the first one, you have to complete a triangle with your marker, but the other two vertices have already been laid down and you need to make it cover a certain amount of space. Or maybe you need to hit a target on the map, but you have to get each marker as close to the center as you possibly can. These rounds can get kind of tough, and a challenge I probably should have seen coming is that the instructions are all in Japanese, which I can't read. Thankfully, Cecil on Twitter was kind enough to suggest that I use the camera on Google Lens to translate the instructions on screen, and it worked like a charm, so thanks, Cecil. I'd be lost without you. And of course, that random wind factor is an obstacle to overcome all on its own. I think the toughest time that I had with any of these challenges was the fourth one, where I had to create a triangle that covered at least 25 kilometers, and when the wind is just refusing to take you in a direction you want to go, this can get a little frustrating. But to my surprise, after finishing this challenge for the first time while recording footage, I completely forgot that autosave wasn't really a thing in 1997, and I had to go back and do it again, but this time I nailed it a lot faster. It wasn't so much about floating out and reaching certain spots, it was about reading the terrain, recognizing the patterns of the wind flow, and learning what areas I could reach the easiest depending on the situation. And yeah, with a bit of practice and fortitude, I managed to complete this mode and essentially beat the game, watching the credits roll to celebrate my accomplishment, but honestly, it's one of those things where it's a nice reward, but something of a formality. The main meat of the game, to me, isn't really about setting impressive records for each objective, it's not completing the rounds mode to see the ending screen, it's the Tri-Delta task. Outside of the rounds modes, when you're choosing these tasks, you have the ability to choose your location, time of day, weather conditions, and music. There are three maps to choose from. Draft Valley, which is clearly set in the days of earlier civilization, a more modern day location with Wind City, or a mysterious and at times almost foreboding vision of a distant future, that being Breezy Earth. Matching these locales with the time of day of your choosing, sprinkling in some rain or snow, and you can just envelop yourself in these landscapes. Maybe along the way, you'll see small signs of life around you. A wagon being pulled by horses, monorails moving passengers along, other aircraft making their way through the skies, and that's not discounting the stationary sites either. Vast plains hosting rivers, tall mountains commanding attention over the land, vacant skyscrapers protruding from the sands, unfamiliar structures and civilizations. The creators don't stop at just making a realistic simulation, they wanted to toy with some creativity here and let you bask in the boundless realms of possibility. And yeah, I know, they're really dated and pixelated PS1 graphics, but that's part of why I love them. They're not overburdened with detail, they're not complicated, they just are. You can tell what each object is, but there's still some room for interpretation, the sort of minimalism that lends it to a feeling like digital impressionism. And that's not to say there aren't some nice little touches here. I like in the darker environments when you use your burner, you just see the whole bottom of your balloon just kind of light up. It, you know, it's the little things. And mixed with the music, ah, it is something else. The soundtrack is actually how I found out about this game. We were listening to a mix of PS1 music in my game store, and the track from Notom called Solid started playing. I had never heard it before, but I was really vibing with it, and that was enough to get me to start looking into this title, and let me tell you, the OST is a huge part of what makes this game work. I'm no musician myself, so it's kind of hard for me to describe the tone or the feeling it brings. I have tried to describe it to people like basically Vaporwave before Vaporwave existed. There's a distant, almost alien sound to it, but also an element that feels warm and nostalgic. And one more touch that just really ties it all together 
further is that you can go in and customize your balloon, choosing your own colors and patterns to add this little extra sense of involvement as a balloon of your own design floats along in the wind. As the music plays and you wander aimlessly through the skies, you might start to understand what it is that I see in this game. It's an atmosphere. It's a vague sensation peering from the back of your mind, a complete package that between its cozy and simple visuals, its distinct sound and mix of carefree nature with careful challenges is something that could only exist on the PS1 and its hardware. This kind of experience could only come from this disc right here. I do want to give a special shout out to my friend Josh, or Executioner, for helping me out with this video. I really couldn't have done it without him. Again, this was the first time I ever tried importing a game, and I would not have been able to play this on an American system, but he helped me load up something called Unirom onto a couple of memory cards, and with these, I can bypass the region locking on both of my PS1 systems. And if that's something you would like to know how to do, he did point me in the direction of some other talented creators and other resources that I will leave in the description of this video in case you want to know how to bypass region locking on one of my favorite systems. I don't know if I was able to win anybody over with this video. It's a super weird and niche game, I know. Floating around in a hot air balloon may not sound like a super fun time on its own, but I got something special out of this experience, and just being in this game and experiencing its world, just sitting down and vibing for a bit. I was thinking about it while trying out Aquanaut's Holiday, and man, I just have an insane level of respect for what Art Dink was doing here. In the age of the original PlayStation, 3D games were still a very new territory to venture in, and if these games were anything to go off of, the studio wasn't interested in just following recent trends. They didn't want to cash in and use the new tech as a paycheck, they wanted to dig into this new interactive frontier and explore it, not only the locations and environments that they could create with the resources at their disposal, but discover what new ways they could find for players to experience those worlds they offered. I think these guys just might be my heroes, I can't think of a lot of other studios doing stuff like this. I don't know if I've ever considered the desire to ride in a hot air balloon before now, but just seeing what this team was able to emulate here, that is on my bucket list. I want to know what it's really like to float up in one and just let the winds take me somewhere, to sail high above the ground and just be for a while. And if I ever do get to experience that, it'll be because of this little game that just wanted to show me the wonders of the mundane. When I'm stressed out and tired and Sega keeps messing up how I want to write my videos, I know that this will be one avenue I can turn to to unwind. I can set up Sony's old gray box, turn on an old CRT, grab a cup of hot chocolate, sit down for a while, and luxuriate in the wind. Definitely a much needed break. I think I just need a change of pace between some of these larger projects sometimes. And you know, at some point, I really have to stop stating what game I'm looking at next at the end of these videos just so there's less broken promises and all of these flow together a bit more naturally, but no, not this time. No more detours. Next video is Sonic 3 and Knuckles, and thank you all so much for your patience while I'm sorting all of that out. I am gonna make sure that it is worth the wait. But until then, remember that my top tier patrons get to see these videos two days early. You can find me on Twitter, Twitch, Discord, Sunset City, whichever you prefer. Links in the description. And of course, as always, spread the word, tell your friends, and until we see each other again, thank you so much for watching. See you next mission. Hello there everyone, thank you all so much for watching. I know this was a weird one, and uh, yeah, I also know that like uh, the Sonic 3 Knuckles video has been a long time coming, but uh, we are finally getting somewhere closer to that actually happening. It's It's been a road, but we are getting there. Uh, that said, uh, that is uh, still a lot of work to go into that, but I'm gonna be posting more frequent updates on my process, just so that you guys actually see a little bit more of uh, what I'm doing as I'm putting that together and you guys can actually see me actively working on it. Uh, I may not be able to do that for every video, but this one is special and this one has been waited on for a while, but it was important to me that I just take a little bit of a step back this week and I just kind of played something simple and fun and just a weird little obscure game. It's the sort of thing that I kind of miss 
from being able to do in uh, in my videos and on my channel is just the strange little games that I think not many people have heard of before. It's something I want to do a lot more sometime down the road, but I do have a lot of big projects I'm really eager to get back to work on. And of course, I only get to work on them because of my amazing support base that is all of you watching this that is obviously all of my patreon supporters and of course i have to give a very special shout out to this month's top tier patrons and those would be brenton hess christine larkin earl valco jeremiah harrison lederick mckenzel mr sp wanton photo patricia marcou cinder n7 and cirrus the skeptic Thank you all once again so, so much. You guys make this possible and you make it worth it. And with all of that said, uh, I am going to go ahead and get back to work talking about the Blue Hedgehog. So I will catch you next time on Angel Island. All right, see you next mission.